Well, hey there, guys, and welcome to Surviving the Aftermath. Hey there team and welcome back. Today we're actually going to be having a look at surviving the aftermath. Now I've been playing this for a little while off the channel. A little while. I mean I picked it up over the Christmas break. So I don't know, past couple of weeks I've been sort of poking at it. Um, it's of the surviving series of games which um, essentially encompasses this and surviving Mars. I think they sort of rejigged uh, after the success of Surviving Mars, the, the company basically released this, and they're sort of going with this Surviving series. So they're not in the same universe, as far as I can tell, but uh, they're leaning into this this sort of survival uh, strategy genre, which I'm all about, because I absolutely love Surviving Mars, uh, and that's a big part of why I picked up Surviving the Aftermath. Anyway, uh, it's not super brand new, but they are updating it quite a bit, and they've had their third really big update called Expeditions, and pretty much I logged in this morning, I was looking to cover something today, and, uh, and this jumped out, and I thought, you know what, it's about time we put this on the channel, had a bit of a look anyway. So, let's start here, Expeditions. Uh, with this, uh... Come with a world map theme, there's a complete new feature, introduce vehicles, that's very cool. Uh, during the early access period, we introduce a new feature step by step. Yes, 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 we realize this. Okay, so there's vehicles, trade improvements, which is pretty thin anyway. Uh, specialists uh, is a thing already, uh, but now you can direct, oh, okay, okay, there's, okay, cool. So it's, it's a little bit of an update. What we'll do is we'll start up a new game. And, uh, and I guess I'll talk you through it as well. It has a few issues, interestingly enough, with the overworld map. I feel like the gameplay is not quite there yet. Not that I'm trying to be critical. Um, show tutorial messages. Let's see what happens if we go with... with. Let's actually say yes, because, you know, this is all new to you guys as well. Um, You'll see what I mean, but you build your colony and uh, and you manage people in a post-apocalyptic thing. It's not necessarily zombies, it's more like nuclear fallout. So there's like blobs of nuclear waste that needs to be dealt with. But it's actually a fascinating sort of um, concept and it's pulling on that thread that I enjoy, which is less about violence in games. Like I'm not a prude, but I just, I feel like we're having a bit of an awakening in video games where it's not just about shoot the bad guy in the face. It's getting like, uh, we're going beyond that. That was a good starting point, but more and more we're getting these games where they're actually looking at different ways to make entertaining gameplay. And this is one of them. So it is a post-apocalypse, but it's more of a focus on the rebuilding and exploring of the region than the fighting. There are bandits and so on, but, um, but it's fairly thin in that department. Now, similar to a lot of these games and Surviving Mars, you set your sort of starting conditions we go through these sort of uh, choices and it will give us a difficulty multiplier. Um, what's this? Average temperature and humidity. Wow, okay, because I've only really started the one game and I made it on easy peasy mode. Uh, fertile soil, 25%. I guess, let's do that. Let's go to that one in the middle. Catastrophes. It's still a dangerous world. Sure, yeah, so comets rain down occasionally and that sort of stuff. The trusted car finally broke down. Now, I started with a, a bunker sort of thing. So I guess we'll, we'll do this. Survivors. Oh, okay, you can change the amount of people that you've got. It all looks about the same. It's just you potentially have more adults. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. So that's sort of a, you know, produce your own people is a component. And then you can put them through little bits of schooling and that and try and have them skilled up. It does share that. There, there are a lot of sort of common themes in the gameplay design with Surviving Mars. Though, if you put the two games side by side, they're actually really different. Um, but they just have some underpinning ideas that are similar. Now, hard exploration, organized bandits. Yeah, let's try that. Let's, I think we're just going to go all middle, right? It's tough, bro. Survivalist, challenging, but fair. Oh, okay, gatekeeper. Now, this is how you get more people into your colony, generally speaking, apart from making them <laughs> with the babies. Um, people come to your front gate. So let's just do that. Visuals. Oh, I don't know. Let's be the Illuminati. Let's be the pink Illuminati. That sounds pretty good to me. Rubri. Let's change that. 
Skylight, that sounds cool. Survive and thrive, that's nice. So we're on a 67% multiplier by just picking all the middle options. That's really interesting, actually. I wonder, I wonder if you just pick all hard if it goes to 100%, which is strange to me because 100% should indicate normal, right? If, you're, if your difficulty multiplier is 67%, to me, that means it's two thirds of difficulty. That's sort of my takeaway. Um, an easy fix to that would be if you're trying to make it appear the sort of the other side of it, why don't you print it on the screen as 167% difficulty, that sort of thing, you know? Go beyond 100% because that implies a multiplier, right? 200% would be times two. Anyway, okay, cool. So you start, because the broken car scenario was what we started with and that's all the supplies we start with. Let's just pause real quick. That's cool because in the other version, you start with a bunker. Um, all right, so here we go, and we don't... Oh, do we have a... No, we don't have a gate, so you have to rebuild the gate. Okay, so we, we, we have colonists. You know, you, this is similar to anyone that's any, ever played these sort of games. The interesting thing is we do have a lot of space. Oh, let's go back in. Let's not do that. Can I just press tab or something? No, map. So, oh my goodness. All right. Let's not zoom out anymore. There's, there's actually a lot of space for us to work with. This is like all of our buildable area, right? Crazy. Um, and resource piles all over the place and nuclear waste. So there's quite a bit, but the thing is, it's it's very, like, even look at here, this terrain, it's very difficult to build, uh, let's say it's like square square blocks sort of thing in grids. So if you're really anal about that sort of building stuff, which I kind of am, um, it presents a very real problem, um, which is interesting. Now, maybe there is a way to terraform the land that I'm not aware of, like flattening and that sort of stuff. But, uh, but that's one of the really big obstacles, um, is just making your base look neat and tidy. But, I mean, it is the post-apocalypse, so what are you going to do? Basic controls, what's this? Oh, we can skip that. Oh, look, it's got it. Oh, you can play with the controller. Oh, that's clever. All right, so we need to build some shelters, so let's do that. Build menu. I wonder if right-click gets the build menu. No, 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 because that's a uh, surviving Mars thing, which I kind of liked. All right, um... Tents and shelters. This is just some basic crap. Um, minor happiness penalty to both. Um, what we'll do is get the emergency shelters up. Now, I know once you tech up and build larger sort of buildings, you get like a baby making bonus. You know, the, the chances of of, uh, of reproducing sort of goes up, which is cool. So like that's your incentive, I suppose. Now, how best to do this? I guess that's our road. We could build like a symmetry around the road, I suppose. You know? It's interesting because you can build paths and all that, but the road's sort of just there in almost in name and that's it. Um, you know what I might do? Can I just rotate with R? It's been actually probably a week since I've played this, so what if we What if we try like that? We'll keep it off the edge of the road, because then we can we can build path. Let's attempt to be neat and tidy, right? So like if you did because you can build onto the road and sort of delete it with the path. But I'm curious what happens if we if we do that. Alright, well let's get the ball rolling. Um, now you can see we're at a water deficit. Production, consumption, we're not actually producing any water. So you can get a well going. Now the wells are generally pretty straightforward. Um, work area efficiency. Can I get a hundred or something? No. Why is it why is it so cross? All clear, okay, that's fine. Um, I don't know. Let's plonk the well right there, right next to the thing -o. Now, they interfere with each other because they're all drawing from groundwater. So if I build another well, which I might well do, you, you want to sort of, it takes an efficiency hit if it uh, interferes with the other one. Anyway, let's just build one thing at a time. Interesting thing about these sort of uh, spots, food storage, is that you can change the work area for food. So if you put it like that, then the dudes that work there are going to automatically go and work the berry pile. Similar goes with this stockpile, and but this is more for like wood and concrete and such. Um, now, I'm still not 100% sure, because it's not like you can staff individual people to these buildings, but you can to other specialist buildings, like a blacksmith or something like that, right? Up here is your pool of colonists, and you've got carriers, and you've got, uh, what is it, workers. Carriers transport resources, build and repair, and workers work in their assigned buildings, right? 
And children don't really do anything, I suppose. I, yeah, there we go. Workers. Workers, zero. Right, because we've got no one allocated. So this, what I understand is the carriers act as just... They move resources around, right? They're the pack mules. So you need some guys just not crewed to a building. And I think in their downtime or their back and forth, they work these buildings as well. That's something that's not really clear. Um, but you you obviously want to keep a bunch of dudes free, which is cool. Like, you don't want to just crew up every single building because then you'll have no one to move the goods. Um, we've still got people that are homeless. And this is uh, six out of six. So let's build... Another emergency shelter? I don't know, it's not super neat and tidy, but that'll do. Oh, hang on. I wanted to... Did I want to leave a space? Ugh. Hang on. Oh, let's see. How's Demolish go? Oh, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Well, that's fine. It's almost worth showcasing that. Yeah, let's, let's do like this, you know? Hey. Now, I don't know how handy the roads are, if we're being perfectly honest. Like, how cosmetic are they? See, like, that gap seems larger than that gap anyway. So, so even the road's not super locked to the grid by the look of it. As best I can understand. Two constructions finished. Oh, wow, have that... Oh, no, I was going to say they haven't finished it already. Advanced controls, what's going on here? No, go away, that's fine. Alright, cool. So, we're coming along. Now... Um, something that we want to do, like, ASAP is build the front gate. Uh, we do have all these other buildings that we can do, but we want the gate because that's how we're going to get people coming in. Um, it also holds resources. Insufficient stuff to construct the gate. Alright, so if we click on the gate, you can see what we're missing. So, we're missing, well, it looks like we've got more planks coming. Concrete, 13. Does that count against the... Oh, no, there you go. All right, so but we've got red here. So we need uh, some scrap metal. So we'll have to build a... What is it? Scrapper or something? Scrapper. All right, so let's get one of these blokes going. Now, this radius is deceptive. In fact, I would say ignore it for the time being. Because what it ultimately is, is this. It's a work area that you can move. That's sort of a core mechanic of this game. Build shelters. Does it say anything of... Okay, I was curious if it would say anything about population stuff, right? About, pop, like, multipliers to having babies and stuff. Build a water source. I thought we already did that. But let's check. How are we going for water? Well, we're producing 10 and we're, we're using 10. So, yeah, the game's right. We should probably build another water source. Let's see if... Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's just bung one up there in the wilderness a bit, you know? So, even this system's not going to work that well, so I'm just going to smack stuff down. But at a certain point, I would probably start, you know, you'd start rezoning. Um, travel time seems to be a real consideration. Now, what's going on here? Why isn't that working? It's because we don't have any concrete. So we move this work area out to, like, if we're clever about it. If we do that, they will only farm the concrete. So off they go. There you go, chipping away at the concrete. Nice. So they'll bring that back. And then they, they pile it up. You'll recognize these little boxes, sort of the way that that stores in little neat blocks. That's a very surviving Mars thing, which I love. Um, okay, well, we're just waiting on a bit more concrete, so we'll do that. Now, power's not a huge thing. At, at a base level, well, let's, not, let's not worry about power. Um, th that's for advanced buildings, ultimately, from what I can understand. Alright, so that's building up. Nice. Alright, so so this do exactly does this. Look, it takes scrap and it turns it into these two versions of scrap, essentially. The first one's what we're mostly interested in. So we move work area and, well, there we go. We've got a perfectly good scrap pile up there. So you could potentially build the scrapper close to the pile, but it's only got 88 scrap. Like, you'd be surprised how quickly you go through it, um, and uh, we've got another worker spot, so we can put that in there, and you can see now we've only got five haulers, but also two workers. So, I guess you'd have to come up with your own sort of comfortable balance 
on how many uh, how many haulers you have for each workspace, I guess. But then there shouldn't necessarily be a one to one. The workspaces are just going to do what they're going to do. All right. Anyway, so we're getting the metal, so that's good. Now we also need plastic, a similar sort of build uh, menu as well, or, or, or what would you call it? Whatever this is, so production building. So recycler, right? So let's put him down. They can be neighbors and swap notes and stuff. Get that building. Ooh, let's build a little bit of a road up there. Okay. Insufficient for the recycler. Right, we're down out of wood. That's okay. Uh, again, we'll move the work area for this. And, uh, oh, I don't know. That looks pretty good there. I think there's some concrete in there, but that's fine. So... It does get a little bit fiddly about having to move these sort of work zones around. Uh, I'm not necessarily against it. Because, like, if it runs out and you're not paying attention, I guess that's something. But also, you could just let it run, too. Adjusting worker slots. No, we already know this. You could just let them run down an area and not work there, right? Um... But ultimately, foraging for resources in this game is, is actually a big call. Uh, shows you colonists. First of the carriers. Yeah, that's fine. Like, from what I understand, creating some sort of... Like Frostpunk, for example, a game I've been playing a bit. Jeez, what's happened here? Nuclear Waste has just ste stepped up. Um... Trying to create like a, a sort of an infinite resource income closed system is, is part of these sort of games usually. And from this, it seems tough. Pollution deposits. Uh, again, you just need to build more advanced buildings to get rid of that pollution. Um... I'm obviously not... I'm not min-maxing that much. I'm not queuing up everything super fast because... I'm trying to talk through this game a bit too. Now... I just saw an unhappy face. What is this? Rested poorly. Hoping for the best and fearing the worst. So rested poorly indicates to me... Uh, yeah, that's okay. We know all this stuff. Indicates to me that maybe we can uh, change their sleeping arrangement. Okay, move work area. There's a big old plastic pile there so they can go dipping through there to make... Plastic. Food production. Now, there's something we haven't really thought about, isn't it? Food. What's going on here? Production and consumption. We have no production. So we can uh, we can potentially get some fields going. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Maybe we'll plonk some here, you know? Does someone have to make that? I guess they do. So it's got all the usual trappings of this genre. Um, let's let's screw up another recycler as well. Actually, no, we can get rid of one of the scrap metal boys because we're not that worried about that. How cool does that car look though? Very apocalyptic. Planting crops. Yeah, so you got corn and potato. Uh, you can get seeds for other things as well, but obviously it's about balancing the yield versus speed. So you can go select next. And uh, growth rate normal, slow. And what we might do is I'm going to do corn just to get the ball rolling on that production. And then we'll scale up to potatoes as well because that's more of a long-term investment. Does this factor into the production at all? It does not. Planting, 1%. Okay, so it's not planted yet. Colonists need food. Oh, I don't doubt it. What I might do is build a trapper. And I think that's, that is reflected by the woods nearby. Work area efficiency. 66%. Oh, there you look at that. Out in the boonies. So we're just going to do that one. Insufficient resources. We're probably missing wood, right? Oh, no. Plastic. Uh, the plastic boys are here. I suspect they've probably put a lot of their plastic into the, yeah, into the front gate. That's okay. Bit of demand for plastic. That's fine. Colonists need food. Oh, of course, we can get wild berries. Right. I guess the trapper and fisher and, and plants, for at least for food, is a good example of... of 
a more permanent food income. I don't think there's any sort of ceiling to like a trapper. It's not like he's chopping down the the trees. I don't think he can over farm the area. So as far as that mechanic goes, it's not hyper complex. I don't know what that warning was. I missed it. How's this going? Close. Storage types. Yep, 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 yep. That's fine. Let's put this at high priority. See if we can get that. We can snag that last bit of plastic. Alright, so this is growing now. Okay, cool. So you'd have to wait to the harvest before it sort of factors that into your production number. Change game speed. No, no, no. I'm not worried about that because we're already going gangbusters. Here we go. So that's going to get built now. Now, I'm pretty sure I've got this running flat stick. The graphics are a little bit rugged, but it is early access as well. I, I'm not begrudging it too much. All right, there we go. So we've got our front gate now. So that's going to help. Here we go. Group of survivors away, arrived at the gate. All right, so you you deal with this. This chick here, Platty, is a specialist, and we need them to explore the world. And then we've also got some adults and that. So you can accept... I don't know why you wouldn't accept people, to be perfectly honest. I mean, maybe there is something, but I don't know it. Okay, so now you go to the world map. And, and here we go. So we've got Fog of War around there and our adjacent areas. So this is fiddly, this whole game mechanic. And I'm still not sold on it. But given that the last two major updates... I think update two was something like Outposts. And then update three is this Expedition Vehicles or whatever it is. So... They're working on this part of the game a lot by the look of it, which makes me very happy because, again, I think it's probably the weakest point. Anyway, so this chick's got five points. Over here is a lubable place, right? Um, there's no hazard or anything like that. It's just holding 24 jerky, right? So just as an example, we can send her in. She's going to take an armful of jerky, however much. It tells you up here, oh, wow, she got all 24. Holy shit. Okay, cool. But now she's out of um, she's out of points. So you just press the world map button and then you go back in, right? The thing is, her points are going to reset like in record time. You can see it going around. And um, so you find you end up splitting your time almost 50-50 between here and then moving your dudes around on their chessboard sort of thing. Which I don't think is a great division of labor because I think the fun is here in, in managing your outpost as opposed to up on the main world map. Get more food or people will starve. Okay, well, we can do that. How are we going with the hunter? Can we have another hunter? Let's do that. Um, we'll, we'll downscale our workforce there a little bit. How's our... And then we've got our berry picking going on as well. Berries, nice. Might take this moment to build a fishing hut. I thought there was water over here. Okay, cool. How does this needs to be on the shore oh there we go well that's perfect so we'll get that going we'll get another farm going as well another small field like that run some run some neat and tidy roads in between it yeah so all the building tools are actually quite intuitive they work quite well all right well we'll get the food going now yeah apart from the happiness see look tired and rested poorly it doesn't really tell you a lot about happiness other than I guess we want people to be happy because we're a benevolent ruler you know construction complete small field um, you know what? I'm gonna put corn on this one as well harvest now yield five no no oh, that's cool that you can um, rush the harvest protected crops what is a protected crop all right, so it pops up here. You can click that. That's the specialist resetting their skill points, right? So you bring them home to get that food, which is a big help right now, actually. We've been struggling a bit. So th this is where it's weird for me, just as general thoughts, because usually when you're running a, a, uh, like a base or something, you're trying to make a base self-sufficient in and of itself, right? But it would seem that a big part of the gameplay loop in this 
is to a point get the base running itself but you've also got these dudes running resources back to the base and like you saw then 24 jerky is not insignificant that's actually quite quite a bit so you almost wonder why am i building my home base to produce any goods when i'm relying on my survivors out there you, you know you know what i mean it's it's just a little bit different i'm not knocking it in fact i'm kind of keen to see how it goes with them developing it it might be a really cool new way to do things anyway so you go and scout areas usually that takes your whole turn and it'll unlock now this is perfect timing actually so there's research points and that's the only way to get them in this game is through scavenging so it's literally they go in they pick them up and they bring them back or well, science points you can see 392 we go back into the map and we click on the tech tree this is where we do our research it's as simple as that bring the points home cash them in for this that and the other i think exploration uh outposts exploration i think they're new things that might have been added but you can just see here as well better farming you know better fooding stuff boring methods tell me about that clean water okay so that's just a better water production alternative alternative protein so you can eat insects in insect farms okay cool oh protected crops so greenhouses and it will stop the nuclear fallout messing with it that's cool but then we go up to delicacies oh bread oh cool that's nice cool okay i'm just gonna have a quick squeeze while i'm sure because again i've only played a little you know um but i thought yeah we might as well show it yeah okay so then we go into the energy production and storage paths um junk recycling is this is how you unlock new buildings you can make parts which are advanced parts basically for building more things um we can make a fuel refinery essential in providing a sea source of fuel for the colony's exploration needs so this ties into the whole vehicles thing which is interesting um battery stacking so we can get street lights and all that again i don't know why you want a street light it, and this might just be because it's pretty early access um but i don't think it's explicitly said anywhere light covers a lot of ground during the night okay but who cares right so it's not clear to me what the in-game benefits are uh, energy production is a thing as well industrial mining now this is interesting you can make a concrete extractor plastic here we go heavy machinery will greatly boost your production require both constant maintenance and large amounts of energy picking through construction materials by hand okay so this potentially creates infinite resource income you know like just frostpunk's a good example because i've been playing it recently and it's doing similar things so this might actually be the answer to that question because those piles that we were uh, harvesting all these from run out eventually now we've got communal living so here we go you can oh well you can get some nice pretty things maybe that helps uh, happiness but again it's not explicitly stated what happiness does maybe guys move faster or something like that um I know in Surviving Mars, people could actually suicide if they got too miserable. And uh, while that's a sad sort of mechanic, I think it's a sensible one in a colony management game. I, mean, I think it should be in all colony management games um, because that incentivizes you to run morale. I mean, gamifying suicide is is obviously a weird topic to get into, but I, I think it makes sense within the genre as a sort of antagonistic component, if we're being perfectly honest shanties and tenements are just better versions uh education school paper windmills look at that okay so there's a lot of a lot of cosmetic sort of stuff for your home but the education is cool because uh here we go educated children gain a permanent production bonus once they start working so that's very clear that's very cool so that's sort of a must have to be honest remembrance you can light a ha handle for those and gain some happiness in the process so you get a happiness boost uh, for memorial uh, what's going on here more comfortable houses look at that two-story house that's pretty cool knowledge preservation so you get a library uh, construction requires fun boxes oh, okay so that must be a very un I think that's an un uh, uncreatable I, I think I've made up a term there but this is something that you can't make you must find on the map by the look of it um, aggression release again a lot of happiness boosters in here so i need to learn more about what happiness how it overtly affects the game 
And uh, look at this, you can even make some sort of TV sit-up. That's really nice, cool. Happy to bo boost, oh cool. Cool, cool, cool. Security, better storage. Hazmat engineering, this is how you clear out nuclear waste. It's a bit of a job because you need the environmental station, you need power to run these as well. So it's not an insignificant endeavor, but it's an undertaking that you really want to do, especially if you want to make better building space as well. Reinforced gate. Uh, survivor groups are questioned in more detail, right? Sometimes important information about the group's conditions. I don't know what that sort of means. Maybe that means they have more stats that you can scrut uh, scrutinize. Perhaps they try and sneak bad elements in to attack your base. There are events that occur in this game. Centralized repairs, fixes buildings. Yeah, because you'll have a crisis where maybe you'll have meteors rain down or whatever, and you have to repair all your buildings. Medical center, that's big. We should have a basic medics tent already, um, and you need that because people will get poisoned, people get hurt working and that. And this is the thing that they've been leaning into more. So you've got outposts in the wide world. So consider that, I don't know if it's clear. Oh, look Look how far down you can go, right? It's, it's a sprawling thing. And with her five points, she can only walk from like there to there, right? So f f to walk from the very far outskirts in is a not insignificant time investment for your specialists, right? So that's where the uh, the frontier sort of outposts come in, from what I understand, right? Uh, past its borders, cool. Outposts allow specialists to drop off their scavenged resources without traveling back to the colony. After dropping off the resources, they are automatically transferred to the colony, right? So it's a, it's a remote post box to drop off stuff that you scavenge. Um, only one outpost depot can support a single outpost. Right, okay, so you'd probably build a whole shitload of these in your base eventually in the more mid to long term. Trade center's interesting because you can, um, it, it's not a very complicated trade mechanic. So you'll find other settlements and that will allow you to essentially just turn on a trade. Time will go by, at the end of the time you get a payout from food, so it's not really trade, it's more that, it's almost like they tribute to you, because I don't think you lose anything, but you definitely gain resources from them. Um, so it's not very complicated, but it's very useful. Uh, like you can almost, I don't think they change either. So you could probably just keep resetting the exact same trade arrangement and have one colony feed you nonstop. Uh, exploration, unlocks garage for repairing and storing cars. So you ha have to find vehicles and bring them back. Again, this isn't something I've seen now, oil. You need oil to repair them, and I think you get that by growing like sunflower or something like that on the field. So it's a cool little mechanic. And then we've got this radar disaster forecast. Oh, okay, and this is a tied over from Surviving Mars. It's just about predicting the crises before it comes. So that gives you an idea of this game, essentially. Um, I'm not trying to tutorialize, but I think I've dot pointed everything about it so far. I really like it. Um, I like these sort of genre games anyway. It. <sighs> If we're being honest, and only because it's in such an early access state, um, like like I said, the graphics are a bit rough, but to me that's, like, that's be aware of it. Or even to excuse, you're probably looking at it going, oh, they look a bit rough, and it's like, yeah, they are. And I think that's just because it's still early days and they're hashing it all out. And the gameplay is there, but it's still a little thin. Um, I feel like there needs to be more production chains or whatever. And then I suppose even... Even in the time that I played it, there doesn't seem to be a lot in the way of antagonistic elements, right? So, getting attacked or having things rain down or people, you have outbreaks where people get sick and all that. But I've always found them to be quite manageable. Now, I'm not super duper hardcore awesome at these games. So, I feel that if I'm having a little bit of an easy time with something, maybe... That's a good indication that it needs to be a bit harder. So I'm not trying to bash on it. I'm just saying that this is, it's solid. It's really cool, but it is definitely early access and it still has a ways to go. But I'd say get around it if you're interested, especially if you like Surviving Mars. Or a team, let me know what you think. I'd be happy to play a bit more. Obviously following episodes would be a little less me barking uh, the rules at you and more about actually progressing the colony but this should give you an idea of what you'd be in for we might just leave it there for the time being and I will catch you guys on the next one